Ah, oh, hey, this is Decibel issue one. That's right, Decibel. He had a mini series. Bet you didn't know that, unless you did. It has actually got some pedigree as well. This is written by Burger King Vaughn. And even though he is a big deal now, or he was for a while, it never really translated to people ganning back and looking at his art Marvel work. Some of it is great, but his work that I look upon the most favourably is that TV show Lost. You know, that TV show that everyone hates now, but I still stupidly defend, even though on last rewatch I didn't enjoy it that much. Well, he wrote a bunch of episodes of that. He was one of the Ed writers for a few seasons. And he actually wrote at least one of the best episodes. And he was responsible for most of the stuff with my favourite character in that show, Ben. And his story arc in seasons 3, 4 and 5. In fact, Burger King Vaughn is the only part of season 5 I have any fondness for. The bits written by him with Ben... That season is terrible, honestly abysmal, except for like the 10 minutes worth of Ben scenes. What was it that was so wrong about me? What about me? What about you? Stab, stab, stab. Classic. Uh, Burger King Vaughn, he left the show in the final season. And I really can notice the dialogue and the overall writing, especially of Ben, taking a nosedive in season six. I mean, they honestly have him say the line, I do not expect you to forgive me because I can never forgive myself. If Burger King Vaughn was still around writing that character, that would not get anywhere near the final draft of the script. The other thing to point out is that this here, this is the first appearance of Woof Club. Woof Club from the Young Excellent Men. He has been held prisoner by some evil anti muty cyber bigots and we have gone awfully long without talking about the title character at this point decibel he was a main member of the excellent men which was a decision that never bore fruit Nothing was ever done with him as a member or with his place on the team. He seemed to be there just because someone liked the character. There wasn't any stories ever done with him. He was just there. Decibel, he is a good idea. He is a good character, maybe. A very depressing character, mind you. But outside of Generation Next, I didn't think they ever did truly explore or implement the character elsewhere. There was maybe one good Uncanny Excellent Men story by Joe Kelly where he was more of a subplot. He was dating a pop star. And then there was a potentially interesting development with Armageddon. Uh, we found out Decibel, he was descended from Armageddon. But that quickly got dropped. And then there is this mini-series which I have not read the rest of. I only have issue one. I have always wanted to read the rest because it is a good first issue. I think it does a lot to establish a unique story for Decibel and giving him a distinct voice. 
when there's something like 20 or so excellent men books on the shelves. This one, Decibel, it might seem like indulgence, but it justifies its existence more so than many others. So Decibel, he shows up and saves Wolf Club from the nasty people. And this came out at the same time as Van Morrison's Excellent Men run. And I'll talk a bit about that aspect in a while. We have a decent introductory scene here with Decibel saving Wolf Club. And then afterwards, Wolf Club... He is more afraid of Decibel than the bad guys because of Decibel's horrific physical mutation. So now we have a great cyclist guest appearance, which is like the cherry on top of the comic for me. An actually well-written cyclist guest appearance. And we have... Im and Decibel, we have a scene with them having a little chat about muties and their current status in the world and their opinions on peaceful coexistence and Dr. X's dream. All well done stuff. I do miss the days when Cyclist was written well. And not only that, but... He was, after Wolfman, he was like the choice member of the excellent men to have guest star in a book like this. And then we get to the plot. It concerns this college in New York that offers scholarships to muties. It offers free scholarships to students who are muties because... Muties are popular. That was like the big inverse that Van Morrison introduced. And it really did breathe new life into the franchise. So there is this college that is basically doing like affirmative action with muties. But what has happened is... This hasn't been greeted well by the other students there or by protester bigots. And there has been a bomb threat and violence and shit like that. All related to the presence of them muty students. And so it is up to Decibel to get to the bottom of this. Decibel, he is gone and gone undercover. He is going to enrol at the campus and try and work out what happened and hopefully save muty lives. It's like undercover boss except without the boss. And that is our setup. We are putting Decibel into this new environment. And there is still a lot of animosity towards muties. Van Morrison, he didn't just wave his hands and make muties be accepted. He just made it so that they were considered trendy. They were tolerated a bit more, but there was still a lot of anger directed towards them. They say uh, this is only a four-issue miniseries, but I really think this idea is fresh enough that it could warrant a much more extended look. Like, this is a strong enough setup and a strong enough arc, and we have a quality writer. This could be worth an ongoing. An ongoing probably cancelled at 12 issues, but still technically an ongoing. This was the sort of thing they otherwise would have done. There were Dean like an Emma Frosty's flashback ongoing, stories with her as a teen. There were Dean a mistake ongoing that was written by Burger King Von as well, quite good. A few years later, they did a Julie Lee ongoing. 
that had a similar premise of her going to a normal college. But it was nowhere near as inventive or clever as the premise is here. So Decibel, he meets a cast of characters, including the other muties who go to this school. There is generic green girl. And there is white man, very, very white man with dreadlocks. And you can tell from his haircut he's an arsehole already. He is also wearing a Mr. Magnets t-shirt. And it takes all of two pages for Decibel to punch him in the face for being a twat. Then we have got a pretty college girl without visible mutation or deformity. So she is good. Maybe I am trying too hard to see this because I bloody love The Simpsons. You know, that brilliant cartoon that ended in 2001. This lass, I reckon she has purposely been designed to look exactly like the grad student who Homer Simpsons from The Simpsons. The grad student who he sexually molested because she sat on the gummy Venus de Milo. Other than her skin colour... She is identical. Ashley Grant, Oh My Bad Man, Season 6, classic episode. So Decibel, he meets all these characters who may or may not be Simpsons characters. And then he meets the student he is sharing a dorm with, who is in a wheelie chair. And we have some stuff that is either genius or... Blunt as a blunt object. You see, the wheelie chair boy, he is angry that Decibel gets, like, free handouts. And he lives, like, a life of privilege because of his status as a mutie. Do you get it? It's like, it's like what idiots cry about people of different races or... Disabled people. And right there on the telly, look, it is excellent statics. Our cliffhanger is Decibel. He gets shot by a bullet from a gun, which isn't much of a cliffhanger because, well, he definitely doesn't die. There's three more issues to come. They're not going to kill him off in the first one. I recommend this. As mentioned before, this was during Van Morrison's run. And one of my favourite things, something that I think nobody else really appreciates, is when you add stuff like this, or excellent statics, you add books concurrent with Van Morrison, that were more than able to keep up with him, and keep at pace with him, and his redefinition and reinvention of the excellent men line. This builds on the sort of themes and things he set up, and it feels like an idea that is almost worthy of Morrison himself. This is good. Seven thumbs up.